All right. Well, last week we didn't have these in stock, I think. So the little Get binder. In stock. Coaster. Coaster is with Adafruit logo. Very rare because we don't put anything. We don't really put our logo on anything other than PCB. So this is our way around that. Yes. And um, they come with bumpers, which are yeah. not shown yeah. in this video, but they have little PCB bumpers. Beverages. Super cheap. Your coffee table. Yeah. Okay, pick them up. up. Next up, we've got a uh, panel mount for the Raspberry Pi three cameras. Um, these have a slightly bigger like camera body, and so uh, I think we already carried the camera V two version of these. Uh, I think these are from Pi Hut, um, but they're inexpensive. They're easy, and they basically give you like a big plate in order to mount your uh, Raspberry Pi three camera. Not this is obviously not the big uh, lens cameras. This is like the noir or plain um, autofocus cameras. Uh, next up, we've got an update to the uh, ADI wing. This was done in a partnership with DigiKey. Um, we had to do a couple revisions for stuff, so we're like, let's go in and revise it. So the original version, uh, you can see here, did not have a stomach UT port, but now it does. So uh, you can, uh, all the parts are in this basically same location, but now you've got stomach UT connection. Um, so you can add more sensors, or you, know, you probably could connect directly to this, but I mean, you wouldn't get access to the interrupt pins and stuff. We've also got an update for the Metro ESP32 S2 Express. Uh, first off, we put a Team USB logo on there because we wanted to celebrate uh, the work that TAC has done with Team yeah. USB. And second, also, it's a cool logo, by the way. Cool see, logo. see, the I is a little USB drive. It's cool. It's fine. It's cool. Um, and thanks to Bruce for designing it. Uh, the boot button moved. The boot button originally, oh, can you go like yeah. here? Okay, yeah, because I'll show the difference. So the boot button and what you was in the middle, and now it's in the top right on the edge, so it's easy to get to. So you can actually uh, load into the bootloader without uh, pulling a shield off. Um, it's got the stomach UT still. It's got the ESP32 S2, four megabytes of flash, two megabytes of RAM. It's uh, got the um, JTAG connection, even though, to be honest, a lot of people use JTAG, but if you wanted to, it's SWD is there. Um, USB C with uh, fuse. DC power with on-off switch, uh, regulator, and LiPo battery and charger. Because we figured it's the ESP32 S2 is Wi-Fi. You'll probably want to take it, um, make it portable, even though it's not super ultra low power. Um, we also changed the battery monitor. Uh, it used to be a resistor divider. It now is a Max 17048. So it works a lot better because the ADC on the ESP32 is not linear and it uses a lot less power. All right, more revisions. Uh, another revision, this is the original, uh, sorry, go back. So that this is the solar uh, DC charger that was, that is our original. We have two of these. Um, and this one is the first one we designed and it features the MCP73871. Uh, and the original version had a mini USB connector. We were going to do a revision on this. Uh, we had to change the DC jack anyways. And so, hey, why not do the silk screen over? And now it is a USB type C connector instead of a mini b connector Product number 390 this is deep cut. this is early yeah this is very early but yeah. it didn't work i will say we have you know what i consider uh, that's the og a better solar charger but this one is still um there is some benefits to this over the other one and they're and they're both very good so for people who need the old version i'm going to keep it around okay all right and then uh these we were just getting to uh, putting these in the store last week, and uh, we wanted to spend more time on it since it was a, a pretty long show. So we want to dedicate a segment to this. These are the new uh, floppy disk costumes for SD cards. Yes, this and this is by Charlotte. So these are so cute. So this is you take a standard SD card and you put these stickers on it, and then they look like little floppy disks. Yeah, all day long. We're all like, hey, retro, fun, and everything. But we're not able to make our SD cards look like the way they should. That's so right. now, now they do. Now you can, and this is okay for the SD card. Yeah, you, you can write. Them. Yeah, you can write on them. Yeah, and you can put these out, and then you can, you can tell the youngins this is how we used to save things. Yes. So you this get a pack. A you get a pack of eight, and two of each color: blue, pink, yellow, and. And black. start an independent maker for all these ideas and cool stuff that um, that's coming out. Very cute. Very all cute. right, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team. Our customers, our community, everybody who makes things go is 
the Think Ink. Yay, the Think Ink Feather, which was originally the Think Ink Trinky, but people didn't know that. Uh, how would they know that? Because I didn't, I didn't tell anybody. Um, but decided to turn this into one of our Feather Bones boards. So um, this is an RP2040 Feather. And on the end there, it's got a standard 24 pin EPD connector. And I'll talk about that. It's got USB-C, it's got a battery, it's got RP2040, we said boot button, battery charging, eight megabytes of flash, 264K of RAM, uh, Stemma QT port, uh, lovely silk screen uh, with Penguin, um, and then all the GPIO uh, you can shake a stick at. And um, the way the bones board work is, you know, it has all the standard uh, pinout for um, GPIO on the feather. And then we, we usually have like about five, six pins left over. And so what I've turned that into is um, I've connected them. You see on the right there, there's um, a power supply and manager for a 24 pin EPD. So let's go to the overhead and I'll show the EPDs. So um, the ink displays um, almost all have the same connector on them. It's a, thankfully kind of a standard. There are these 24 pin connectors. And like this is a, a 2.13 inch, and this is a 2.9 inch, and this is a 5.65 inch uh, seven color version, which I think is neat. It takes a while, but you can see it's like it's got gray and orange and yellow. Um, and they all have the same connector, and so um, you know you can easily pop out and replace a different uh, e-paper display, and then you'll have to change the code for it. But all the um, boost circuitry that you need, you need all these components to make it run. Um, are pre-connected for you. And the RP2040 is a really great chip to run e-ink displays because they need a lot of RAM. Uh, they need a lot of RAM because you have to draw the entire display at once. That's why we call it thinking. Thinking. It's more than just an e-ink display it's, that goes into this. It's, it's a bunch. bunch. It's a thinking. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you still get all of the feather pins besides. And so you can connect your e-ink display. We have also extension cables for this connector. And then um, you can plug feather wings on top if you like. So if you want to connect, um, you know, can bus, you can pop on a can bus feather. If you want to um, add on, sorry, I'm just looking at all the thick ink, just, uh, all the other uh, feathers that we've got. If you want to add a uh, joystick or TFT or Ethernet or Wi Fi, also you can do that by just plugging in a feather. But for a lot of purposes, if you just need to have a um, board that runs any standard e-ink display um, and you don't want to do any soldering, uh, this is plug and play ready to go. All right. And that is this week's new products. Yay. New, 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 new,